Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this screencast, I want to talk about Roots' ability to handle dynamic content. And so I think if you've ever worked with Jekyll, that's going to be the closest approximation that you can get to how dynamic content operates within Roots. But I just wanted to run through really quickly um, just an example flow. And so if you go to um, the docs on the Roots website, which you can get to up top just clicking on documentation, you'll see that there is a section that covers dynamic content. And in this section, I tried to cover pretty um, thoroughly how everything works with the dynamic content. Um, so you can feel free to read this through if anything's confusing. And if you're still confused, by all means, let me know. Um, but for now, I'm just going to um, create an example site and explain uh, what we've got going on there. So from my desktop, I'm just going to create a new Roots project. I'm going to call this one a blog. And you can flag it with um, dash dash blog to have it open up a sample blog that uses dynamic content within Roots. And so I'm going to do this to save you guys the time of watching me type out all the boilerplate. Um, so now we have a new project at blog and I'm going to change directories in that folder and open it up in everybody's favorite text editor, Sublime Text. So here we are. It looks pretty standard, uh, similar to the default template, except for this one folder called Posts. And so looking inside of this folder and also opening up Layouts, um, we can see that we have some slightly different looking files here. So here we have a very similar to Jekyll looking uh, post file, and this file has front matter at the top, front matter being any block of YAML uh, enclosed in three dashes at the top and bottom, which defines a YAML comment. And so if you want to create a set of dynamic files or some kind of dynamic content, all I need to do is create a new folder at the root of your project and inside of that folder have one or more files that have a block of front matter. And so you can see this on the website. I have another example with the title and date here. As long as there's front matter in here, it will be treated as a dynamic file. And you can see I have two posts here. And inside of the post, you can write anything you want within Jade. Um, since these are blog posts, it's going to be mostly text. And so I'm just going to use Markdown here. To write them. However, if you wanted to have anything more complicated, you can feel free to use any sort of jade markup um, to render whatever you want within the actual body of the piece of dynamic content. Now looking in layout, we have something that looks pretty standard. There's no difference from the regular layout. Um, however, I do have something different under, um, under single, which we're going to look at in a minute. And we also have a slight difference in index. And so you can see here, this is how I'm rendering the posts. And so anything from this folder that has YAML front matter will get pulled in as a piece of dynamic content. And it will be pulled in under site.posts, right? And site dot whatever the folder name is going to be, whatever holds the dynamic content in that folder. So it's not always going to be site.posts. The reason it's dot posts here is because I named my parent folder posts. And so if you wanted to make another piece of dynamic content, you could make another folder called shenanigans, put something in there with front matter, and it would be available under site dot shenanigans. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm getting at site.posts and I'm iterating through each post in that array. And so in here you can see that I have a variable called post that represents each one every time that I loop. And I'm pulling out two variables here, right? And so these are variables I actually defined in the front matter. So I have the title of the post up here and you can see that I pulled out the title. And then we have URL, which actually isn't defined in anywhere in there, but this is one of the uh, magic things that Roots will inject into um, any sort of dynamic content that you're putting up. And so the URL will just be a pointer to where that actually an individually compiled file lives. Um, and so this way we'll be able to link to each post while showing in the index the title. Um, so right now I'm going to go back to our command line and I'm just going to fire up the watcher so we can see this in action and then we'll walk through the rest of it. So here we go on the index um, as promised here are the titles of both of my posts and indeed there is a link to where that post is compiled to. And so you could see that in addition to bringing the um, variables from that post into site.posts if we take a peek inside public it has also created a post folder and it's compiled each one into this folder as well, which is very convenient because then we have individual access. 
So, and this is and this is very much what you'd expect um, because if you make a new folder with a Jade template in it, it will compile it directly into public. Um, in this case, the only difference is that it has stripped out this front matter piece so that it doesn't throw a jade error and it's just going to drop the content in here. In addition you can see that we've also specified a layout in the front matter and so the layout is optional if you don't um, put a layout in there it'll just compile them by default into uh, the default layout um, but since this is here and I want to render the single post a little bit differently um, it's going to look inside of uh, views which I actually renamed to layouts um, using this hidden folder config um, configuration just because it made a little bit more sense in this situation but as you can see I, I just remapped views to layout so it'll look inside of the the views folder by default um, and it will look for this single template right and so in the single template we have an additional global variable that's exposed called post and this one will always be called post um, just because I don't have enough language built in to specify um, you know, the singular and plural forms of this, and I think it's kind of silly. Whenever anything is dynamic, it's somewhat of a post. And so whenever you have a template that you want to use for a single piece of dynamic content, you will have a global variable called post available within that template. And so here I'm taking advantage of this to pull out those YAML front matter variables which I have lost since these are not part of the Jade template so it'll render the actual contents of this in a single template under yield correct but I still have access to that front matter if I just use the post variable so this way I can set the title to be appropriate and you'll see if we look in here that we do have the appropriate title up in the title bar and in addition I can uh, set up the title for that post uh, with a big H1 up top Meanwhile, this yield is going to come in, and it's going to dump the actual contents of the post here, which is great. Um, so this is the basic setup for dynamic content. I know it can seem a little bit confusing at first, because there are a couple of little magic variables floating around, but I promise once you work with it for just a little bit, you'll get used to it pretty quickly. Um, one more thing that I did want to mention is that you can also access the content of the file, right? This one is not a variable in the front matter. So you might think that it wouldn't be accessible here because what would you call post.what? Um, it is actually mapped out to post.content. So I'm just going to um, render this without escaping the HTML. If I do post.content um, and then I move back to the index and refresh this, you can see that it has actually spit out uh, the content of the post here. And so I do have access to everything everywhere. It just depends on how you want to lay it out exactly. And for a blog structure specifically, there's no reason to render the content. Um, it's easier to render it on a second page for the individual post. Um, however, you might find that for different types of dynamic content, you might actually want to be able to use the content straight up um, from iterating through the site variable rather than from yielding it into a single template. And so that's also available to you. Um, so if this is confusing, feel free to uh, reach out to me. I would love to know um, what people are getting tripped up on so I can try to make it clear. It's often hard to think of what people are getting tripped on just because I made this myself so I'm familiar with it. Um, but any sort, any and all feedback is, is very much welcome and I would love to make this clear and more helpful. Using dynamic content is enormously powerful. Um, and in a couple of recent sites that I've made uh, for my full-time job, it's come in to be indispensable. Um, and so I would highly encourage you to use, look for pieces within your site that are actually kind of recyclable posts, um, which are some sort of dynamic content, whether that's a link to a press article, whether that's one of your staff members, whether it's one of your company's capabilities, whether it's a post on a blog, it could be almost anything. Anything that sort of is a list that will change and grow or shrink over time is a really great candidate to try out some of this dynamic content stuff. And coming up soon, there will be a, a really nice integrated system to deal with this almost as a CMS, but I don't want to give too much away now. Um, that is definitely something to look forward to for the future, though. So um, I hope that this helped going over dynamic content a little bit. And by all means, let me know if anyone is confused by anything. And thanks for watching.